Chapter 40 I stood in my room. I shifted my feet on the white marble. Sunlight poured into the room like a golden waterfall. I looked behind me. The two cat statues of black onyx flanked the door. The bed was made up with a silk sheet. The waterfall shower fell from the ceiling into the pool. It all was still here. The white gauze curtain swayed in the window and I grinned. I could not help but grin. I entered the balcony and looked down at the river that fell into the ravine. As always, I could jump and when I would land in the pool below, I could smell the earth and the green. I could feel the wind and the spray of mist carried on the breeze like never before. It was real. I could touch it. And I knew beyond the trees was my cottage and stream. Elizabeth, I turned and I could see Jose in a faded screen in the mist. Elizabeth, oh God. I saw him pace my bedroom on the other side. He was dialing a phone. David, please pick up. I looked at my body, staring off into space, clutching the pillow, and in a daze it hurt. It felt unpleasant. I turned back to the balcony. I positioned myself to climb up on the banister and jump. Yes, David, hi. I don't know what to do. I don't know what happened. She isn't moving. I furrowed my brow. I felt irate. Who is he talking to? I thought. I was so angry. I pulled myself up on the banister. The wind swept through me. The falls thundered and the sun enveloped me like a warm blanket. I raised my hands to the sky and breathed deep. I was ready to jump and not come back. Not this time. I would be free and live in my wood with the stream. There I would be free. There I would be forevermore free. And she won't wake up. I don't know. I looked back to the room and at the image of Hosea pacing my room. He was ruining my day. Who was he talking to? There was no David. He looked silly talking to no one on the phone. I returned to the balcony, but Hosea was being too loud. I don't know. She isn't responding. She isn't moving. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'll try it. I looked back to the image just as he picked up my body. My eyes stared dead to him and the world around me. I watched him carry my body to the bathroom. He placed me in the tub. A breeze grazed my leg and I was ready to return and run back to my forest and trees when I watched him turn on the cold water. No! In the bathtub, I gasped as the cold water hit me. The balcony, the sunlight, my room was gone, and I was back in my mind in this world. I didn't want to be. I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back. Maybe if I didn't speak or eat. Maybe if I just died, then maybe it would all stop. He's calling my name. I can hear him. He's calling me. I don't want to answer. I don't. He doesn't know what he did. He doesn't know what I saw. There is no David. It was him all along. Everything I wrote, everything I did... Everything David had told me to do, all of it, it had all been Hosea, just Hosea all along. And what will you do, Elizabeth? Angel said. I finally could hear her words. Stay in your mind, locked in that room with no doors when the death men will find us? Or will you get out? Accept that what he did was the best thing for us, for you right now. I won't trust him, I said. And she answered, I know. I will never trust him again. No. Angel said, you won't. I can't forgive, I said. You won't. I can't forget. You won't, she agreed. I just want to go back to my Irish wood. He did it for you, Elizabeth. Does that not matter? I don't care, I shouted back. He lied to me. I trusted him. He did it for you, because right now you needed this. I want to go back to the wood. What he did, she said. This, this is what you needed doesn't matter. He meant well. You're better because of it. You know now. He made you aware. Now what will you do? I blinked and focused my eyes on Hosea. He was crying. He gasped and held me. A cool calm hate enveloped me. He had lied to me. I had trusted him. I had opened up. You lied to me. I said. I know. He said. I didn't know what else to do. He shook his head and I let the cold venom take me. My heart shut down and I welcomed the logic. I didn't know what else to do, he muttered over and over as if that mattered. You lied to me, I said. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, he was sorry. I didn't care. He meant well, Angel argued. You'd better, you're better because of it. Now what will you do? Wasn't I better? Wasn't I functioning? Wasn't I feeling again? Hosea proceeded to implore. I'm so sorry, so sorry. I took a deep breath and passed my judgment. 
You did what you had to do, I said, and listened to him cry with relief. He muttered his thanks and apologies. I didn't hear what he said. I didn't care. I knew he didn't see the cold hate in my eyes. I knew he missed that completely. He pretended to be a psychiatrist, William said. No, I corrected. He pretended to be a student studying psychiatry, and it was made very clear to me that the emails exchanged were not psychological advice, that we were just friends and that it was to help David out with his studies. I understood that David was not a trained psychologist. Still, you thought you were talking to David. Yes. How, how, how did that make you feel? Betrayed, I said. I had trusted Hosea. I had trusted David. You grow fond of someone. You love them. And you think they're real. Then you learn they're not it's worse than if David had been real and died. What did you see when you looked up, William asked. What made you leave this world and not want to come back? I sighed. When I looked over Hosea's shoulder, I didn't see an emailed response from Hosea to David. I was looking at an email from Hosea to myself, doctored to look like it was coming from David. It wasn't real, I said, shaking my head. That is what came to mind. It wasn't real, none of it. I couldn't handle it. I slipped back into the safest place I knew I had that, that room when I was a child. I lived in a part of my mind that was very real to me at a time when I was constantly threatened. You said you wanted Nick or that you needed him? William stared, started, and I knew what he was asking. Of all the emotions I've had to describe, this verb has been the hardest to explain. I did not love Nick. I knew this. I had no emotional attachment to him at all. I looked at him and was disgusted. He was very unattractive to me. There was no lust. I hate to say that I was driven to sleep with him because I wasn't, nor did I want to. But he didn't rape me. Did I have a choice? Most people would say yes. And yes, I had a choice, but that feels like a lie to me. I could have chosen to not be around him, I guess. I could have chosen to quit my job. It's so hard to explain this to people who don't understand. Most people think that there are certain set emotions in a woman who has an affair. Selfishness, greed, lust, disregard for the victim, her spouse. No. None of these emotions existed in my head or heart. In fact, all I could think of was Hosea and not hurting him. I did not want to feel or desire or want anything with Nick. If I could, I would have ripped the urge to sleep with Nick out of me. But I was afraid not to sleep with Nick. I didn't need to sleep with him. I had to do it. I had to in the same way you had to shoot your favorite dog because he has rabies. That is what it felt like. It was kind. It was a kind of had. My only concern was Hosea, not hurting Hosea. But I had this thing inside of me like a poison that was changing me. I felt it changing me and I hated it. The metaphor of a time bomb strapped to me. It is such a perfect metaphor for this. It felt just like that and my only focus was getting Hosea away from ground zero. Problem is, Hosea wouldn't go. Learning that David had never been a psych student or that he never existed made me question everything we had covered. Suddenly, the exercises, the lessons, the process, all of it was the advice of a jealous boyfriend and not a professional in training. Was David Hosea right? Only a psychologist can scrutinize the details and answer that. Until that happens, I have to question everything that took place. Hosea is damn lucky I came back. I wasn't planning on it. I saw no reason to. I was more than ready to find that to make that final jump I never come back. I didn't care. The results of the David incident left me with a deep-rooted anger, betrayal, and distrust that I would never discuss. Furthermore, the issues I had on earth, all of them, my fear of men, my fear of leaving the house, I turned my back on all of it and closed the door. I was aware of my rapes. I was aware of my conditioned response to movies. But any progress I had made came to a screeching halt, and Angel kept screaming. I ignored her. I got used to her. My emotions, most of them, the anger, the hate, the jealousy, guilt, rage, most of the pain, they remained locked in the steel room. Final unofficial diagnosis is that I was a rape victim suffering from a plethora of fears all stemming from my rapes. The diagnoses could not have been more fucking wrong. One thing I will say, David Hosea made me aware of my problems and triggers. Some of them, it was a start that I could not deny. We walked away from that experience and never spoke of it again. Little did either of us know that David, Hosea, had barely begun to scratch the surface.